وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا لا إله إلا الله وحده صدق وحده ونصر عبده وأعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وعلى أصحاب سيدنا محمد وعلى أزواج سيدنا محمد وعلى أنصار سيدنا محمد وعلى ذرية سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما كثيرا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما كثيرا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر كثيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا لا إله إلا الله وحده صدق وحده ونصر عبده وأعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وعلى أصحاب سيدنا محمد 
وعلى أزواج سيدنا محمد وعلى ذرية سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما كثيرا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما كثيرا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا لا إله إلا الله وحده صدق وحده ونصر عبده وأعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وعلى أصحاب سيدنا محمد وعلى أزواج سيدنا محمد وعلى أنصار سيدنا محمد وعلى ذرية سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما كثيرا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر, الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله 
وسلم تسليما كثيرا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا لا إله إلا الله وحده صدق وحده ونصر عبده وأعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وعلى أصحاب سيدنا محمد وعلى أزواج سيدنا محمد وعلى أنصار سيدنا محمد وعلى ذرية سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما كثيرا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله السلام عليكم بيد مبارك. So we just want to uh, describe the the prayer for for those who are guests of Inshallah. This is your first time. We will have uh, two rakahs. We will have uh, seven takbirs in the first rakah and then five in the the second raka. So once I move the podium, Inshallah, we can stand for salat al Once I have the uh, salat al right here, Inshallah. <clears throat> Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Walillahi alham. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Alladhi khalaq al insan fi asni taqwim. وَبَعْثَ نَبِيِّنَا مُبَاشِرِينَ وَمُنْذِرِينَ وَأَنْزَلَ مَعْهُمُ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ لِيُخْرِجُوا النَّاسَ إِلَى سَبِيلِ الْهُدَى وَيُخْرِجُوهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ أَشْهَدُ أَنَّ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ 
wa asyhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alaihi wasallam ba'ata bil ummin rasulan minhu yatlu alaihim ayatihi wa yuzaqihim wa yu'allimuhum al-kitab wa hikmah fa in kana min qabl lafi dalalin mubin that is to say that all the praise is due to Allah the one who has created the human being in this this form that we have as humans it is excellent as Allah has designed it. Not perfect, but it is excellent for the purpose that Allah has designed it. And he has sent messengers and warners to take us from things that we don't know into what we do know. And we witness that Muhammad the Prophet, the prayers of peace be upon him, he is his excellent servant and messenger, and he is the Khatam and the Bahin, he is the seal of the prophets. And in this day and time, as we have many people right now who are coming to this religion, especially in the, where we live now, the land of rebirths where people are coming to this religion. Some we know and some we don't know. Somewhere right now, someone is taking a shahada. And also, somewhere right now, someone's committing their heart to serve Allah. So this day for us is filled with symbolism, filled with rituals. So we want to start with just giving some recent explanation and this may be a reminder uh, to some, but the time of day, the time of day that we have the prayer is for a specific purpose. The time of day of this prayer is called the Duha time. But the time of the prayer is described by what is happening with the sun. The time of the prayer is described as what is happening with the light of the sun. At the time of day right now, if you was to look right now, the sun is between its the horizon and its zenith, but yet it's considered the brightest time of the day, not the hottest, but the brightest. So at this time, we are having the prayer followed by a chutbah, and both of those make up a unit. But at this particular time, what we're doing is uh, culminating what Allah is doing in the earth. So what is happening in our internal life okay. is mirroring what is happening in the external world that Allah has made. And it's at this time that we have education. Because the education that we have at this time is supposed to bring in enlightenment. It is supposed to take our understanding, our awareness, our perception to new levels. And not only that, it is called uh, for this particular id, this is the name of this id is Adha. It's not the same as it was given. Same time, same prayers, same rakas, but what's different is what is happening in the evolution of the human creation. The difference between El Adha and El Bitta is El, El, El Bitta, we have that at the end of Ramadan and at the end of Ramadan. That is our self-discipline for Allah's sake, the discipline of our life to prepare ourselves for the workload for what Allah is going to put on our shoulders. And once we achieve that successfully, then we're celebrating our individual success at that particular point. My fast for the sake of Allah, no one but for the sake of Allah. But at this time, on this day, what we're celebrating is the, uh, the community effort, not just my effort, the effort of my brother. Not just the effort of my brother, my effort of my father and my mother. And if I had, if you have your parents, then you're all celebrating that collective effort as a unit. And you multiply it many times over. So at this particular time, El Aha is even a bigger celebration. Because now I would have celebrated a community achievement. Not just me, but my brother and sister. Right? And it's a beautiful time. It's a beautiful day. And this particular chant that we have. This chant came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after one of the successful battles. Just listen to it. <clears throat> so when we, whoever's reciting the chant, we are supposed to follow them. We are supposed, if you don't know it, <clears throat> chant what you know. But the person that is chanting this, we will read it together. This came after they had fought battles. So that means some people went out on the battlefield and they didn't come back. But yet, they were outnumbered. But Allah granted them victory. And then we have this. So this particular chant 
It's really a chance to say that I've overcome a battle and I've come back intact. It says here, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. It says, La ilaha illallah. There is nothing but Allah. So I go to battle. I leave my wife at home. I leave my children at home. I leave my, my plants. My, I leave everything. And I'm going out, and I don't know if I'm going to return. We outnumber, but for the sake of the religion, what do we say? We're not fighting for money. We're fighting for nothing other than. Nah, nah, nah. So they went out and they came back successful. And but when they came back on some monkey, they didn't have, they didn't have enough camels for every soldier to have a horse or a camel or a donkey. Some went walking. But what they did was they shared. Some would walk a little, a little bit, and some would ride a little bit, and some would ride a little bit, and some would walk a little bit. How come this all of a sudden didn't just ride his camel all the way? He got off his camel and let the weak ride his camel. And they came back victorious. No one thought they would win. Only Allah promised them that they would win. So this particular chant. Whatever you have going on in your life represents that particular victory. Whatever you have to overcome and whatever you have overcome and what you are overcoming and what you will overcome, this chant is for that. It says the next one. While in line home, praise be to you. Allah who act on Kabira. Allah is bigger, bigger than my enemy, bigger than my foe, bigger than my rivals. Bigger than all of those things that's coming against me, Allah is bigger than that. We got forces coming against us right now. But Allah is bigger than all of those forces, despite what it looks like. Goes on. Walhamdulillah kabira. So it says, Allahu Akbar kabira. Walhamdulillah kabira. And praise be to Allah in abundance. I don't just give Allah little praise. So when a chant is made, Next time, we have to let our echoes, our voices echo and thunder through this building or whatever building we're in, the angels be rocking. Because that's what it's about. I get it. We come here with time, and I get it. But this is supposed to lift our spirits. But let's look at it. But the knowledge will lift our spirits. Let's look at it. So it goes on and says, Wa subhanallah, he bukwa wa asila. And glory be to Allah in the early morning. That's us, right? You got out your beds. It's Sunday. You got out your beds. You might not want to sleep in. I don't know what you normally watch on Sundays or what we do, but we are all here getting ready to celebrate the victory of the soul. So let's go on. Uh, yeah. So it says, glory to Allah in the early morning and the late afternoon. La ilaha illallah wahta. There is no God except Allah. These people that was making this chant thought that God was made of stone. They thought that God was the rain God. God was the, the God of earth. They had a God of everything. They had a God if they got the toast off. They had a, a God if they needed this or they needed that. They wanted children. They had a God for all of that. They had a God for everything. But here it is, Allah is teaching us that in the most important time of your life, the best way you can get your life on track, the best way you can elevate your life is within this particular focus. So this particular focus is not for one person, it's for the whole people. So it goes on and say, Sonika Wahda, he fulfilled his promise. What promise did he fulfill? He fulfilled that if we go in battle, we would win the battle. They were outnumbered every time. They never had advantages. Never. And every time they came back victorious. That's us. No matter what it looks like. You got up in this morning. You, you came here. You came ready to praise God. And Allah will reward you for it. He will not fail. You're not like us. We make promises. We, you know, sometimes we don't keep them, but it's not intentional. 
but Allah does not run out. You see, the word is used for abundance. Means that, you know, what I, you know, holidays, certain stores are closed, banks, and Allah's never closed. Yeah. So whenever you need him, he's always available for you. You know, you have the hurricane, so you have to hurry to get something for the run out. You don't have to do that with Allah. He always has it, and he's ready to give you more. Keep going. So he says here, when Nasara Abda, he helped his servant. Well, how did he help him? He didn't just help him with no rituals. He helped him in serious aspects of his life. He helped him defend his life. Those people were going to take his life, and he was not even aware of it, and Allah protected him. And then he never even suffered that. He died of, of just a regular death. He did not die on the battlefield. Allah blessed him, even with those untrained soldiers. He didn't have the most trained, sophisticated military army in existence. Khalid ibn Walid, he came later. He didn't have any of that. And he had just regular people like us picking up a shield and a, and, and a sword. Some didn't even have shields. Some just went out there with a sword. They didn't even have enough equipment. You know, everybody needed. Some people went out there didn't even have anything. Some people didn't even have it, and, and they just happened to take it out and then caught a weapon. What a beautiful thing about that! Why am I saying that? No matter what you are, your your talents, your your education. You need to go forward with whatever education you have. If you have a chance to learn more, go back to school. If you have a chance to learn something different, learn that. But don't think that your life is faded the way it is if that life is not living up to the life that you know Allah has destined you to live. Keep going. Well, Aza Junda strengthened his forces. Allah did not just help Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heal all that was with him. Allah don't just help the imams and our religion and scholars and the ulema. He helps all of us. He helps all of us the same. Wahazam al Ashaba Wahda and alone brought it to tribes. That's what that's what the chant is about. Sometimes we just get the channels. Let me talk about your future leaders out there. When you make the chant, you have to know what we're saying, but we need to do it with enthusiasm because this chant is in response to what Allah has delivered. And we have to show gratitude. When we come in here and we don't give the chant, the person is up here beautiful. Presentation and he going solo, dolo. <laughs> right? That's okay. We just didn't know he going solo, dolo. He ain't going along with the victory. We together in this thing. So, before we go on, I ask you to get up one more time. When I'm finished, and let's see if we can give it another go. Right? Let's see if we can get it beautiful. We're going we're gonna, to we're rock with you this time. All right. He goes on. The, he says it again. He keeps saying, there's no blah, 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 because Allah's making sure that you understand where your success comes from. Yes, if somebody helps you, Allah helped you through that person. If you are able to help someone, Allah's blessing you to help someone through what he's given you. Allah's helping us understand. And whatever he gives us is meant to be used to help someone else. It's not ours. Lost the proof is not ours. We can't take it with us. There's a joke. Now, in our coach, I hope y'all can get it. If not, I'll explain it. They say you never see a U-Haul attached to a hearse. <laughs> then you never see a U-Haul attached to a hearse. Because all of those things that you put in the U-Haul, it's not going with you to that particular other place. That's why the ancient kings and queens of old, they would bury them with all of their wealth, and they'd come back, and the wealth is gone. They would think that the wealth ascended with the kings and queens. No, it did not. The wealth was in the hands of the grave robbers. <laughs> right? He going. He says here, Mukhlisin alahuddin wa walahu karihal kafiru. Offering him sincere devotion even if the disbelievers hate it. I'm going to celebrate it. If I'm the only one in my family. Some of us, that's us. I'm coming to the end prayer. Some of us are blessed. We come with our whole unit. Some of us, it's just us. But we still come. And Allah blesses us all the same. Whether I have my wife with me, my children with me, or whether I don't. Whether I have a, a, a friend with me or whether I'm this is my first time I'm coming by myself. Allah uh, said that you need to do it no matter what the haters says. Allah knows that you're going to always have haters. Keep going. 
So he goes on. Look, let's see the Lahudin. Well, while the Lahu offer him sin to Goshen if the disbelievers hate it. Then he goes on. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Oh Allah, invoke your blessings upon our leader. It is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that gave us everything that we're practicing right now. How to do seven? How to do five? What to say at the end? How to how to perform it? And more importantly, how to perform Hajj? What are the rights? What comes first? What to do on Arafat? What to say on Arafat? Where is Arafat? What's the purpose of Arafat? Inshallah, we'll cover it. So it goes on. And the family, that means that the people that help him, that's not just his biological people. We are the family. We are his followers. So Allah is also putting it right here. This will be echoed in the annals of history. And inshallah, when we're no longer physically here, we'll be a part of this. He goes on. And the companions. For Allah asked, why say it, Look at that. For those who our uh, sisters are constantly under attack. I, I just wasn't even part of it. I just, I just loved what he was saying. And I just wanted to cover it. So I won't go over it. I, I, I felt the need to cover it. So, so then he goes on and says, and the wives. That shows us how important our spouses are in our efforts to please Allah. It's critical. Allah is saying that. Well, Allah do the ati said Dina Muhammad and the descendants of our leader was salam taslim and kathira and sin abundant peace upon them. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So we celebrate it. It, the word itself, means reoccurring happiness. It means that it's coming back all the time. It means that it is returning all the time. So we celebrated, I'm going to skip right now. So we celebrated yesterday Mount Arafat. <laughs> And there's a surah in the Quran called uh, al -A the heights, surah 7. And in that particular surah, you'll see Allah mentions Adam and his wife, and he'll mention different prophets. He'll mention uh, Prophet Nuh, he mentions uh, Prophet Musa, he mentions the Ad, he mentions the Dalud, Dal 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 he's mentioning all these different people, and this is a checkpoint for our young adult. But anytime you see Allah mentioning the prophets, Right? May the prayers of peace be upon them. Alayhi salam. Allah is talking about man and his evolution. And history is a long time, but it's a blink of an eye to Allah. So anytime you see that, you have to understand Allah is talking about the movement of evolution in the life of man. He's not just talking about those people by name. He's using them as a particular point of focus, but they represent a movement within the human family. So there's one thing. So we go for a lot of time. And one of the things that we do on my Arafat is we should ask for forgiveness. We should ask for Allah's mercy. Allah says that when you show him appreciation, he gives you more. If you want to know how to get more from God, that's not, not the same with getting more from us. If you want to get more from God, then you show him appreciation and he will give you more. And may Allah give us the reward for performing this in the way we're supposed to, with the right spirit, with the right intention, with the right enthusiasm. May Allah reward us. May Allah have mercy on us. May Allah forgive us. I mean. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ashadu an la ilaha illallahu wahtahu la sharika lahu. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I witness that there's nothing worthy worse to accept Allah alone. And I witness that Muhammad the Prophet, the prayer speech upon him, he is his excellent slave servant and messenger. Ameen. So I'm just going to read these bullets really quick and make some points. So one of the things is that for us, the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I want you to remember this always. 
Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi was always optimistic. He said to his followers, if you knew what I knew, you would laugh less and cry more. If you knew what I knew, knowing that Allah has showed him many things, so many things that his companions asked about it. But he didn't show him everything, but he showed him many things. He showed him many things that we can't see. And yet, knowing those things, he said, if you knew what I knew, you would uh, laugh less and cry more. But yet, he was smiling all the time. That's for us, right? Sometimes we have to be aware if we're smiling. Sometimes we wear our burden on our face. And it's okay to have the burden, but we have to work on how this particular appearance is because that can be off-putting, right? It starts in your homes, in, in, in your workplaces, and all those things. You have a bad day, you don't wear it on your face. Now, that's not easy to do, but if you fit on some going to, go to the restroom or go to a mirror and see how you're looking to see if you wear it on your face. But understand that bad things are going to continuously happen because we're not in control of everything, but that does not mean we should wear it on our face. That's the only thing, right? Some of you may have a flat or you may have gotten a fight on the way here, you know, you may have gotten, you know, I understand how it goes, but right now it's time to put the smiling face on because of what Allah is doing. It is a time to rejoice, right? So just for a moment in time, if you could, those things that you think about in your life that are unfortunate, put that in the rear just for a moment. If you can, it costs it real hard. And then try to think about what God has done for you, what Allah has done for you, what you have to be grateful for. And that should hit your law to do some sort of smile. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not come to bring the world into rituals. He came to prepare mankind for the job of managing a life in this material and human environment, the way that Allah intended. One of the nicknames of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was Munir, giving light, giving wisdom, giving knowledge, giving understanding. As our goal, our goal, what we have to do first is get our individual self together. See, when you first go on out of the first thing you do is you need to ask Allah for forgiveness, knowing that we all make mistakes, and sometimes we've made mistakes that we don't know. So just ask Allah for the mistakes that you kind of know or think about. Also say, and Ya Allah, forgive me for the mistakes that I've made that I'm not even aware of. And Allah will help us have the character that we need for this religion to shine like that sun shines at Duha time. People will make some sound. I'm going to make you slow, sir. So one of the things is this. Allah accepts our best. Allah accepts our best. Allah knows that you are not perfect. But what Allah asks of you is just give your best. So we have to all the time work to give Allah our best. It's not satisfactory that we give the world our best, but the creator of the world does not get the same thing that we give the world. Because it is Allah that will conclude the world. So Allah deserves our best because the world that we don't benefit from, he made it. The clothes that you're wearing, he put that in the earth so that you can have it. Yes, you may not have made it yourself. Yes, you spent your money. But it is Allah that gave you that brain. That whatever that brain produces, you get benefit from what the brain produces. But Allah does not get the best. So Allah wants our best. He should accept our best. That's thing. Talking about the future. So, you know, we go on Arafat, and right now they calculate millions, over two million people on that particular, it's not about, it's, it's, it's a raised particular uh, uh, piece of grace, but it's not, not it's really like a hill, but it's like a long hill, right? And just imagine, right, if you take a scallop of that, it looks like snow on a mountain. Everyone over there, two million people in all white. Why white? Because white represents the individual condition that you and I came in when we were newborn. See a sister carrying that baby. That baby hasn't done anything wrong. That baby is just an obedient servant right about now. 
living in the comfort of his mother's arms. Boys, perfect spot. No deals, not as they are. He, he, uh, she or she is the, the boy or girl. Yeah, yeah she, she got everything, right? The best of both worlds, right? And so, Prophet Muhammad said, him, he described his mercy, God's mercy, like this. He said, So if a woman lost her child in battle and she ran and nursed the baby, he asked the, the companion's question. He yeah. said, Do you think that along with uh, uh, have that mother throw her baby in the fire? He's used this as an example. He's talking about hell. He was trying to show the companions that God is not eager to throw you in hell. You have to earn that. Allah does not create you just to throw you in his hands. And my mama used this beautiful example. Do you think that a mother, after losing her child, would just throw it into the flames? That's how Allah looks at us. He is not eager to throw us in the flames. So what does that mean for us? He gives us chances to repent. He gives us chances to get forgiveness. For those who fasted yesterday, if you fasted the way that Prophet Muhammad taught us how to fast, you might know two years of, of rust on your heart. It says sin, but rust on your heart last year, and it shall not live long enough the, the sins for, for the next year. That is all because you obey the law. Last one to say this. When you go on our side, after you come down, then that's when you make the sacrifice. So why is it you go up on our fire, you make all of these things, you make all these two hours, you meet all these people, you reconnect with people from all over the globe, but most importantly, you reconnect with your best self. Now you're ready to come down and do the real work. So when you come down and do the real work, now you're ready to give to those people in need. So our objective is we have to ask Muslims in the West, we're coming in the West because it's only 1% or 2% of those of us here. So that's a lot of work, a lot of opportunity for us. And God, everybody can get up here on the mic and do You can do Dawa in your profession. You can do Dawa just in how you carry yourself outside your home. All of these things that Allah gives us really is attractive. And I'm telling you right now, people are looking and they just watching and saying, wow, what's so they look so interesting and in how you carry something. And they want to ask you questions, but they just want to make sure it's your So maybe they can learn about Islam and see what is it that makes those people do the things they do in a society that is against them. So we have to create new circumstances for the future so that the future is better than the present. Allah wants us to come forward with a desire to live and work for a better world, to influence the many who will be a great factor in bringing about a better condition for people to have a better life. Prophet Muhammad said this last thing, and I'll stop here. That Allah knows what calamities are going to strike us. No matter what we see in the world, nothing is happening that Allah is unaware about. Nothing is happening that is taken Allah by surprise. And nothing is happening that Allah does not have the answer to. We just wait. And Allah will show the world that he is still on the throne. And inshallah, he will show that at the hands of the righteous. May Allah accept our ear prayer today. May Allah accept our fast on yesterday. May Allah accept the heart of those who made heart. We are going to close, but I want to, let's see if we can one more time. Let's see if we can support and do this thing with a little bit more enthusiasm. <laughs> Allah, Akbar, Allah, Akbar, Allah, Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allah, Akbar, Allah, Akbar, wa ilaha illallah. Takbir! Allah, Takbir! Allah, Ibn Mubarak, thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.